Welcome everyone to another episode of Catapult's interview series where we discuss CLAT attempts, life at law schools with our past students. Today I'm joined by Devdeep Basu. Devdeep was a student here for two years, one year. For one year, uh, apologies. And he is presently a first year CLAT. Devdeep, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. Hello everyone, I'm Devdeep. As Akshat mentioned, this is my first year at NUJS. I'm the batch of 28, BALB. I did my schooling from Methodist School, post which I joined Catapult for my CLAT preparation. And I gave my 2022 attempt based on my CLAT training here at Catapult. Yeah, uh, um, Devdeep, how does it feel me being back? I realize this is the first time you're back in the Catapult studio at the Catapult Center after giving CLAT. How does it feel like just being back here? Uh, it feels nostalgic because there were many evenings, many uh, afternoons being spent here worrying about mock scores, asking doubts, asking clarifications about the mocks. A lot of evenings were spent here. So it feels really good to be back here as a law student, as a tier one and a new law student. So the hard work has paid off. Certainly, certainly. And so let's just dive back into memory day, discuss how your prep, how your entire CAD journey has been so far. So let's just start things off. Why did you tell us what motivated you in the first place to, you know, take up law as a career to even give CLAT as the exam to go? So the first thing is key CLAT was not my first choice in the beginning. I started off with uh, IPMAT. IPMAT is Integrated MBA at IIN Indore. So that was my first priority and I had been wanting to achieve, uh, do well in that competition since I was a kid. But then uh, we passed class 12, I did give IPMAT, but then uh, things did not go out as planned. And uh, it did not pan out well. But one thing which was evident from my IPMAT result was that I was very good in English. So from where my father told me, you should focus more on a paper which is based around English. You will do well in that. And that's where CLAT came in. CLAT was the, it was introduced to me by my father. Uh, even if MAT was introduced to me by my father. Uh, he told me that you will do much, much better in CLAT and this is your area. So... That's how my CLAD journey began. He uh, got in touch with the local authorities and we came in touch with CLADAPUL and I joined them for the 2022 attempt. Uh, it was in lockdown, so uh, so it was very tumultuous. Ah, there was a lot of turbulence, uh, online classes, all of that. So 2022 attempt, I did give my efforts, but things did not burn out well. And uh, I got uh, a rank of, I guess, 1200 to 2000, somewhere in between. Wherein uh, I had the option to go to NNU Sonipat, but then I wanted to go, I wanted to aim higher. I wanted to go for a better thing, better NNU, which is why I took a drop. My father encouraged me for it. And he said, Ki, if you, if we, the surprisingly, the CLAT 23 was just six months away. Yeah. There was a timing change. So he encouraged me for the drop. He said, if you can track it, go for it. And that was all the motivation I needed. And uh, I started working. Next six months were actually very tough. I... Next six months, uh, home, mock, back. That was my routine for, throughout the week. And uh, no friends, no circ- no social parties, no social circles, all of that. And well, it paid off. Again. Yeah, uh, I'm glad to hear that, that you know, your journey from all the way from Ipmar to getting to guy times was successful. I'm really glad to hear that. Maybe talk to us about how your journey for CLAT was during the pandemic. So even I personally being one of the first batches who gave COVID post the pandemic, um, understand the challenges are there. However, how do you think, say, you know, Clatop as a center, other resources as well that were with the bill online shaped your prep? How do you think, you know, the online period of your preparation helped you um in the broader race to Glad? Right. So even if we go, even if we are very, very modernized, if we reach a point where technology is actually that advanced that we can connect to each other without the need of physically meeting each other, but still there's a there's always a need of physical presence, physical uh, classes, physical meet and greet, which I've always felt during my online preparation. Plus, COVID was very loomy. The the period was very loomy itself. So there were online classes scheduled. Some some days I had to miss online classes because of other things. So it was very hectic. The, there was not a fixed routine for the class, which eventually hampered me as well. So I think as much as I like the preparation phase, because it was something very unique for me to prepare for a competitive exam during the COVID period, which was a period of uncertainty. But uh, I would any day choose physical classes over uh, a COVID-based preparation because it comes with many challenges which are uh, not visible on the surface level. 
Right. Um, I completely understand and get where you're coming from. Um, uh, Deepa, remember you being as a very enthusiastic kid. I remember even after classes, you used to stay back to ask some questions, and you always had a smile on your face. Right. That's something I definitely noticed about you. So I think that is something that is extremely crucial for students who are going through CLAT to have a very positive mindset, have a very positive outlook. Because at the end of the day, it's an exam or a test against yourself, right? You are competing against your own abilities on one particular test day. So can you tell us how, through the online period, through offline classes, giving the COVID, uh, giving the CLAT attempt finally, you maintain this positive attitude throughout, and you know any encouraging words that could help um, our viewers who will get give CLATs in the coming years to inculcate that positive mindset. Right. So um, one thing is that there there will be definitely uh, some days when you feel very very low, and it's very natural. The positive thing used to come just because of the faculty I got you and all the glad uh, world faculties which uh, guided me throughout the period. Like you mentioned, I used to stay back for doubts. So uh, I was never received. I did not receive any sort of negative approach that I I can't I cannot approach this person for doubts or. I won't be given enough time. I was always given a welcoming approach, which definitely improved my <coughs> ability to ask doubts, which is something very crucial and something which you should look at to when you're selecting your coaching institution for CLAT. Other than that, uh, there will be a stage where you definitely feel low because of your mock scores, because mock scores are something which totally vary from say seventies to hundreds. It's a mess. And I remember uh, I used to call you and we used to talk for forty, forty-five minutes. We we had those long calls. I used to tell me he, like you mentioned, that it's a race against yourself. So you need to plan out your mind well. You need to focus well. So all of that really helped. And uh, sure, the the positive thing is something which you need because after getting low mock scores cons- consistently, uh, you will feel like giving up. You'll feel like this is not something which you should do. This is not something which you can do. Which is something very common, and that's where study buddies come in. So when I came into Gladiator, I got in touch with uh, one of my close friends, Aditya Chha, who is right now in CNU Patna. Uh, we are still in touch. So uh, we are a group of heroes, way more uh, intelligent than we used to score high on the GK tests. And then I approached him that how do we do it? He shared the resources. We started prepping together. And then there came a time before CLAT, one month before CLAT, that we were up the entire night. We were completing Drishti marathons, CLAT upward, GK compendiums, um, all of that, just for revision. So that's when that's when you realize that the component of a study buddy is something very important. When you all know that study buddy helps you pick up in uh, in your race, but you have to be sure that. Your study buddy has the same goals as you. You cannot choose someone based on just your friendship. You have to choose someone based on their goals as well. Their and your goals should be similar. You should both be aiming for CLAT. You should both be aiming for a good position in CLAT. And you should be fighting. There should be fight uh, within yourselves as in a healthy fight, healthy competition, which is when uh, he used to get more, higher mock scores than we always. So, which was something which I had to push for. I used to ask him, how do you manage to uh, get such high score in such a less time? How do you manage time? How do you divide time in, within your sections, amongst your sections? So that is something very crucial. Uh, you get someone to compete with in a healthy manner. You have to make sure that th- that's healthy competition and that's not something wh- which becomes toxic because that is something which uh, can happen very easily these days. But uh, that's about it. So having a study buddy is very crucial to maintain a positive outlook on the entire preparation journey. I'm glad to hear that. I personally. Um, did not follow this route. I haven't heard of many friends of mine either who could sustain the relationship and you know just motivate each other. So it's glad to hear that you have found a new made of friend out of your journey. Um, and just to add on to that, yeah, I think just doing small and little things to make a positive outlook is very important. Like your prep is for a year, for two years even, right? So just knowing that you know you might have a bad day and that's okay. Um, it's something that's very important. To just give you that space mentally to ensure you're not forcing too much upon yourself is something I wish all of you guys are out there also doing. Just take each day as it comes, and yeah, just don't pressure yourself too much. It's gonna be alright. Uh, right. So you talked about mocks. So let's delve deeper into your prep strategy. Let's maybe start us off by telling us what is your favorite section, or how do you divide your times between the different sections that are there in the class exam. Right. So my favorite section was legal, and it it had been so for from the beginning itself. 
and uh, I used to start off with legal as well since you should start, as in my personal opinion, you should start with your strongest section that gives you a good edge in the mock. Now, during our time, we had 40 questions, so it used to take me 45 minutes to complete GK section, to complete the legal section. And um, just attempting the legal section gave me a boost because I knew that I attempted my strongest section first because of which I had a good head start in the mock. Uh, coming to think of it, the legal section uh, really intrigued me more during the preparation. Since I, when I started my CLAT preparation, I was not this involved in, during the preparation. But then more and more as I studied the different concepts, contracts, all of the concepts, then uh, I came to know that this is something which I would be studying and could have the opportunity to study for the next five years, which is something which interested me. And I remember phase uh, two weeks or three weeks before CLAT, at least a month before CLAT, when my legal scores were plummeting down. It went down to 20s, so which was very worrying for me because legal was my strongest section and I was banking heavily on it. So then my father, again, he was the sole guide mentor. So he dropped it and... Uh, he suggested uh, to consult with uh, teachers and improve on your weak area. So that's something which I did and eventually the legal scores came back up. So that is something which I remember during my CLAT preparation as legal being the consistent part. Consist considering that how, I'm, how I'll be studying legal for the next five years, this is something which stays with me throughout the journey that legal was always my favorite subject and I did score well in the CLAT as well. As far as I remember, I scored 38 out of 40 correctly which was a huge uh, boost to my score as well. Yeah, that sounds really great. Um, so you mentioned, you know, your study schedule as it was at a point of time where you used to wake up, go give a walk and just come back the busy day. Could you maybe tell us, um, divide it in say two parts, say one month before CLAD was the final one and say those months preceding that, right? How did your daily routine change? What are the different things that you would do in a day how did you, you know, take out time for the CLAT exam as well? Considering that you have board exams, you have different things that you have to look at. So, yeah, how did your schedule look like? And how did you take out time for CLAT every day? Right, so uh, since I was doing, uh, after the 22 attempt, I took a drop. So I had ample time on my hands just to focus on CLAT. So, which is why I divided my schedule according to that. Uh, I did not, I was not the kind of kid to wake up early. I preferred more late night sessions. I used just to wake uh, studied in late night, say till 3 a.m., 4 a.m. to complete whatever my daily goals were. And uh, my routine used to look like this. I used to wake up, uh, get my morning formalities done, breakfast and all. Then I used to sit with the newspaper. Uh, I used to spend a solid one, one and a half hour. I needed some time to go through the entire newspaper, the editorials. I used to uh, make notes of that, which was not very consistent, but I started off with that. So I started with the GK GK bit in the morning since GK was something which was a huge burden on uh, my head and I'm sure everyone watching right now it's a huge burden on your head as well. So that is how I started uh, that started the day. Then uh, I moved on and uh, I used to take my bath, have my lunch, all of that. Then I used to sit for a mock from two to four, which was uh, the dedicated type for mocks. Whenever which one day I decided to get, do give a mock, it was definitely from 2 to 4 because uh, you have to give a, give your mock in such a time frame which is similar to the CLAT. You have to acclimatize your body according to the situation which you will be in during the actual CLAT exam. Since you might be feeling drowsy after your lunch, you might want to take a nap, but you have to familiarize your body according to that. So that is something which worked out well for me. I was not um, thankfully sleepy during the CLAT process. Um, and then I would, uh, after the mock, I would take a break of say 30 minutes or 40 minutes. And if I would give the same mock as my study buddy did, we used to sit down and analyze the mock together. That would go on for another 1.52 hours or even more, depending on the number of clashes we have. So if we, if we both agree on a certain question, we move on. But if we are stuck on a certain question, he answers A, I answers D. Then we'll deliberate, we'll discuss why A should be a better choice or why B, D should be a better choice. That's how my evening went and then I, after discussing the mock, after going through with the analysis, I used to sit down and give some sectionals. Depends on which section I performed badly in the mock, I used to give some sectionals. And then back to some GK after the sectionals, analysis of sectionals and that's about it for my day. Maths was something which, uh, which I would like to highlight as well. Maths was something which I did not pay that much attention to and my father would be... <laughs> 
uh happy to hear this because he used to ping me uh, pester me my father and mother both he i should spend more time on maths i should give more time on maths but uh that's something which i did not and that is one of my regrets that i did not spend that much time on maths i did not devote that much time as i did to other subjects especially gk gk used to occupy a solid chunk of my day uh starting from the newspaper in the morning then after sectionals i used to go through compendiums as well past compendiums because there was backlog so and you have to revise the backlog so gk was or gk has always had a consistent part in the structuring of the day but uh, something which i would like to add here is i did not focus on maths that much which is a mistake because maths holds a solid 15 marks in during our time at least um and that is something which makes the difference in ranks even one or two marks can make a difference between the ranks considering this year's paper that 24 paper especially where in one marks can mean a lot of rank difference so that is when subjects like maths come in handy so maths you should always prioritize at least one hour for maths practice daily which uh, which will definitely pay you off during the clat exam because there's a high probability that your strong section does not pan out well in the uh, in the exam things do not go like planned during the clat exam and that is when your backup options should be that study so for me it was english on english as a backup option and we'll come to how that did not work out but anyways so you have to have something which uh, provides the boost for your failed marks if legal legal was my strong section if legal had failed me on the day of clat say i, I had messed up five numbers out of the 40 numbers i had to make up th- those five numbers in some other section and that had to be sure shot five numbers so that is how you divide your paper which is why maths is super super important pay attention to maths um apart from that that's about it my uh, uh day that was about it and um, we used to discuss as i mentioned i should discuss my mock with my study buddy and then sometimes if i am feeling sleepy which is why study buddy is again very important now uh, also you do not have to force yourself to find someone you do not have to actually get someone and only then will you excel and only then will you reach your goals it's something which worked out for me it's not something it's not some it's actually very lucky that uh, i found someone with the same goals as mine because during my preparation and during everyone's preparation you will meet students who are um, who are giving the same mock as you but they are not as dedicated but they are not as focused on that thing as you uh, due to several reasons whatsoever but you need someone which uh, you need someone who aligns with your goals and that was aditya for me so yeah any time i used to feel drowsy at night when i knew i have to cover things i used to call him up we used to discuss for a while we used to chat on random things on what we do after going to college and all of that which used to act as a motivator and uh, that's how i used to stay up so that was about the day right thank you so much for telling us so intricately about your daily routine maybe something if you would help our students with and something a lot of people struggling with as well during the clat prep is you know what study material to focus on right in the market you get books for almost everything and anything every single coaching center has their materials which unless you buy all of them you can't really compare which one is better right so we tell us what study materials you wish you prep what you know what you use you found useful and you would recommend for the students to get them as well all right about the thing of uh, getting lots of material online which is a very real thing because during my preparation as well <clears throat> there are several clat uh gurus so to claim who uh, claim they have the best material and uh if you give them mocks the, there have been many rankers who have been uh, giving their mocks and which is why they have uh, bottom those ranks so which is something a normal student might get confused and they or she, he or she might uh waste their time there so which is a very real concern because in during your clat preparation you don't have that much time to afford wasting on material which is not worth that material which is sub par quality so about that there should be there should be a thumb rule that you should stick with your coaching first first material should be your coaching you should complete your coaching material and then you should look at other competitors who are well off in the market and you should give their mocks if you are not someone who uh, can afford to or uh, is in the situation where you can buy it then you there are other means by which you can acquire it you can uh, ask it from your friends but you should definitely give mocks of at least two to three coachings and those should be reputed coaches otherwise that again goes down the drain your method your time your energy during that that two hour process goes to a waste because 
uh, bad answers are a real thing in answer keys and bad explanations are a real thing in answer keys which is something which is not talked about a lot sometimes you might know in your guts that A is the right answer but according to the answer key it's C and you just cannot come to the fact that the answer key is saying C without any logical reason or even if they do give a reason that's just not enough to your understanding because you have a basic sense of prep so which is why that's where reputed institutes come in you should not focus on anything subpar I believe that two to three good institution mocks are more than sufficient for your CLAT preparation you should always diversify do not stick with one coaching material that's not a wise way to go about because CLAT is very unpredictable so you should be familiarized with different coaching materials and during our time we used to uh, get material on telegram as well but again you have to be intelligent about it you cannot go about uh, surfing random material random coachings random material which is something which uh, can hamper your progress um so maybe thank you so much um for sharing those resources and being very honest with what you use um you you talked about how you took a drop year how you attempted plan way to took a drop for 6 months and you were getting 23 right yes. so can you tell us what was the benefit or something you learned out of the f- like not a failure time but your first time at cat which helped you you know prepare yourself for the second attempt so please go ahead right uh, there are several mistakes in my first attempt which is something uh, why, why i would encourage uh, junior aspirants if you have the option to give clat in your t- during your 12th while your 12th is going on you should definitely try it because uh, that gives you a real honest hand to god experience that uh, being in the examination hall being with other students who are fighting for the competitive exams competitive scores that feeling is very different from a mock so any aspirants who are right now in 12th and have the option of giving it and can um, go for it i would highly recommend you to go for the clat experience you should definitely you definitely learn something more about clat that day than your whatever number of mocks combined so what i did learn was that there were lacunas in my preparation strategy how i thought that i had done enough in some particular subjects in legal or say cr how i thought that i had done enough in those subjects but that was just not enough so that was a eye opener for me uh, i changed my study patterns after that i changed i used to refer to only one source of gk at that moment for my clat 2022 attempt which was again a mistake because of how unpredictable clat can be so i'm not saying that you have to refer to five six gk sources because that can be exhausting there are multiple number of compendiums in the market and you can get carried away what i would recommend is two or three first your coaching material then two good reputed coaching material on gk is more than enough for your gk preparation so focus on that focus divide your material wisely do not spend time running behind uh, material of so called coaches so called institutes which are which are claiming to give a good result that is all just social media marketing which is something which many students get carried away by and they realize that after their first attempt as uh born into ways that this was not something which they should have focused on so uh those were my learnings and definitely i learned more how i could give even more time i thought that i'd given enough time but uh, i was definitely wrong i could have given more time i was so near yet so cl- uh, far away from my goal and i always had this thing in my mind that i wanted to go out of the state which was something very built in my mindset that i had to move out of the state and uh, my parents did support me for that but the thing i always had in mind is if i am going out of the state i would go out for a very prestigious tier 1 and i knew otherwise i would not which was clear in my mind for from day one which is something i would recommend the aspirants as well to clear your priorities from day one as in uh, be clear about the choices if you are given in front what would you choose so that is something which i was clear about from day one even though it uh, resulted in many grueling days during my trop preparation because i would see my uh, friends my batch mates from my school partying enjoying in their college fest their college activities that was a very hard time so uh during that time you have to be focused and my friend as i mentioned aditya jha he was also preparing with me during my trop attempt as well so that that served as a huge motivator we were giving mocks together so after we used to give mocks every sunday at a, um, after at going after going to gochi institute and then after the mock we used to have tea there and then we used to analyze right after the mock uh, at the tea stall so we had become quite familiar with the local tea stall guy 
he knew that we would come there every Sunday and analyze our mocks right after the exam. Which was which became a fun activity after a point, you know, because mock analysis is something which is a very huge part of your uh, plat preparation. If you do not do that correctly, that can result in many failed attempts, many failed attempts at mocks, at increasing your score in mocks. So after a point of time, it was just fun. I would look forward more. I look forward more to the analysis of the mock than the mock itself. I w- because I knew I would an- analyze it with my close friend, and he would give the best insight that I could get from anyone who has attempted this mock. So he was very very good at mocks. He was better than me, which is something which uh, pushed me as well, and which uh, intrigued me to get his opinion on this particular question. Whenever I would be stuck on say a uh, tough legal question i would think he, what would he do what would his opinion be on this uh, question because uh, we are study buddies after all so that is something which helped me throughout the preparation and drop in itself can be very daunting for students they can be alone they are alone during this uh, phase which is not m- very much spoken about so all that i would say is hang in there do not forget your goal uh, my parents' support was very important during this period as well because it's uh, a period filled with low mock scores, fluctuating mock scores, uh, not sure of what will happen if you do not get in, which is something which I discussed with Akshar also over a call that what if I do not get in, what if this does not go through and we had a proper one, one and a half year hour call on that. Uh, during which he explained how uh, your present matters, how what you think during the exam matters. So... What do you think after the exam that, oh, mera nahi wa to kya hoga, that, oh, uh, what if I screw up this section and my result do not come through, my result does not come through, my CLAT rank is so much uh, below what I had aimed for, what happens then, what do I do then, what are my options then. So this is something which you cannot afford to think of during the during any mock or during the actual D-Day itself. Uh, surprisingly enough, I had this thought during our uh, CLAT attempt once in my English section. Because there were there were a couple of answers rocked during our attempt in the English section, which actually um, had shaken me uh, from my balance. Because I was pretty con- confident that this should be the correct answer, but I was still uh, hesitant to mark it because of the visible confusion in the paper and the way the question was set. So at that moment, I had the thought that what if I have confusion in English, which is my, which was my backup to my legal section. That in legal field, English would help me survive. So. That was very concerning because legal went pretty well for me and I knew that after I had attempted the legal section. But uh, even after that, despite having a good legal section, I was concerned that if my backup section is not up to the mark, then uh, it will be very problematic for me. So that's something which uh, played in my mind constantly. Um, so you have to be <clears throat> always alert about uh, what's going on in your paper. You have to be alert about what thoughts you have during your paper. You have to be control. You have to be fully in control of your mind. You cannot let your mind wander to different places. As soon as I had the thought of what if, um, if this does not happen, I'm failing in my backup option section and uh, this is not something which I'd anticipated. What if CLAT doesn't go through? And then I had mentally slapped myself. He, you cannot afford to think about this during this uh, period. I looked around, I saw candidates were still filling up their OMR bubbles. I thought to myself, I cannot afford to think about this. And then I started, and then I dived deep back into the paper. And then it uh, went well. So that is something which you have to always keep this in your mind. I had a mentor who is in uh, Bangalore right now, unless Bangalore, who messed up his OMR sheet, who messed up uh, his roll number or a crucial information which you enter on the OMR sheet, which is like the basis, which is what you do at the starting of your paper. So if you mess something in the first five minutes, how are you going to deal with that? I remember he told me that he went through it as if that had not happened. He thought that, okay, I have uh, done this mistake. I cannot afford to think about this for the next two hours. That will hamper my entire preparation year. That will hamper my, all the bonds that I have given. I cannot afford to think about this. So he went, okay, uh, I know I have messed up big time, but uh, this is something I can move on from. I'll think about this after the exam. This is not in my hands right now. So that is something which that mental c- control should be on the aspirant's hand, which is something which I would recommend. Uh, meditation is something which uh, can help you get such mental control which was also you know uh, very pushed by in my household as well that meditation is something which can calm your nerves which can uh, help you soothe in the preparation journey and at a point of time when you have given enough mocks you are just used to that feeling uh, there's a point in uh, there's a point during which 
um you dread your next mock attempt that oh what what happens if i drop lesser than my previous attempt what happens if i uh, go below that what happens if i perform pathetically in any one of those sections so that is something which you have which the feeling of which you have in your first let's say 10 15 20 mocks but after a point of time after let's say 20 25 mocks there comes a time when oh you have to give a mock i have to give a mock i have to give a mock that's about it I have to give a mock, I'll give it from 2 to 4, I'll analyze what I did wrong, I'll work on my mistakes and I'll give a mock again tomorrow. That is the ideal goal, that is the ideal phase you want yourself to be in during your CLAT preparation. That you're so unbothered by the entire process of CLAT uh, mocks, that you're devoting your 100% of your mind just to the mock giving process. So, that is something which I would recommend the aspirants to be in, that is the most ideal state of mind to be in. And that also helps during your grad uh, D-Day. Like I mentioned, I had digressed from the actual point, but it helped me come back to the main goal that I have to focus on my CLAT paper. This is at hand right now. I cannot mess up my present just by thinking about my future. So, yeah. And uh, thank you so much for walking us through your day of CLAT as well. Walking us through how the CLAT 23 looked for you, what the challenges you faced. It's really great to hear such an honest opinion from somebody who went through that recently. Um, you know, since you've discussed quite a lot about how that day was for you, maybe we can talk a little bit about what you felt like, how the experience was once you left the center, right? So maybe talk us through what you were thinking then um, and how did you, you know, what were your thoughts in the coming weeks? How did you sort of um, acclimatize yourself with this no longer having to give an exam say as that people are in? So how was that for you? Uh, that was great, considering one factor which I'd like to mention, 18 December 2022 was when we gave 2023 uh, CLAT and that was the same day of the final of the World Cup. So that is something and I am an Argentina supporter. So that was something uh, very, uh, when I became very relieved that uh, after the CLAT, after I went through with the exam, I knew one thing was sure, my 100 marks went well, which is the reading part, but my GK and maths, which is the 50 marks, uh, which is the variable 50 marks, those can be up and down that depends from paper to paper. And that is what sets apart candidates every year because those 50 marks change or uh, alter your fate forever. So I knew that my 100 marks went very well. Uh, I was expecting a higher one out of those 100, which I did not get you after the actual assessment, but it was pretty satisfactory. And I knew that I had performed poorly in the 50 marks. So that was my first analysis and I knew I was correct in that. So. I told that to my parents as well when I came out of the center and the rest of the day was uh, pretty chill because I had, I was finally done with all the mocks, all the GK compendia previsions, all of that. It was a uh, pretty uh, chill day after that. We went home and then uh, there was a World Cup final which I was looking forward to and surprisingly enough they gave us the answer sheet as well, the answer key of the CLAT exam that day itself which I had in my mind, I, I was very confused whether to check it on the day of the World Cup or not. That could have for my uh, World Cup experience as well. So I thought that English went decent. I was not yet aware of the actual reality then, but I knew that I couldn't start with English. So I started off with legal, sorry. I started off with legal because that was my strongest section. I started off with legal and I saw, and I checked it half. I did not uh, go through with that entire thing. I checked like 15 questions. And I saw that 14 or 13 or something on those numbers were uh, correct out of four. I think 14 out of 15 were correct out of the questions which I checked. And I was pretty happy at that. I thought that I cannot, uh, I won't check the entire section because that might be not a good thing to do when you are enjoying the World Cup final. So after that, I paused my checking of the answer key. Uh, and then the idea of checking the answer key of English came to be during the halftime of World Cup. World Cup final and uh, that's when I realized that I did a huge mistake by doing that. I had checked about 10 questions of the English paper and I found out that I, I have done 5 correct, 5 wrong which was very uh, disappointing for me because I thought English went well and that's when I stopped checking the paper. So that's uh, about the experience I had on the day of the exam. Yeah, uh, that sounds good. I think um, quite a rare moment where you could you know, enjoy your success at the CLAT exam as well and watching you play a football team um, win the World Cup, that sounds quite amazing. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about, you know, after getting to CLAT, say, you know, after getting into NGS, how your experiences have been so far. Um, so maybe start off with, you know, your first day on campus. 
I realized you just finished one semester year on college and you know take us through that first day and like the first few months and all this such the first day when we uh, met with our batchmates was during the registration when uh, i met couple of my batchmates and we we had just done the basic introduction greetings and then came the first day of the semester where uh, we have uh, contracts which is taken by lovely ma'am which is definitely something which is very different from school grade teaching because uh, once you come to college you are not especially in ujs and uh, any such prestigious law, law school what is being done here is that you are given material and you are expected to cover that and uh, there's no spoon feeding of that stuff you you are expected to cover that you are expected to cover such material and be ready for your class next day at 9:30 am which was a shift in what was going on compared to all my life two months back or one month back and suddenly i have to prepare say three case law briefs and uh, be at the class at 9:30 am tomorrow so that was a change that was a completely different experience from what i was going through in the last couple of months and it took some time to adjust then uh, the natural pace of the classes the courses kicked in and uh, it has been fun so far and you guys is a pretty great place to study at considering how there are parties almost every time uh, and uh, some for something or the other there's always an after party there's always some party where we are enjoying but at the same time we also have that academic rigor we have to complete the given cases we have to complete whatever has been given to us for our class tomorrow and attendance is pretty strict here so the basic the basic academic criteria has always been set in stone that you have to be as you can party as much as you want you can enjoy as much as you want by not compromising your education you for which you have been here you have, for which you have actually chosen this path of law so that is something you cannot compromise on which after the first semester many students including me have gotten a kick again to focus more on the academics and uh, there's always this competition going on but you strive to be the best you strive to be someone who is doing well uh, well of academically and there are several co curricular activities as well like debating mooting uh, we have a very rich culture of mooting in our college and that is something you have to focus on along with your academics so overall you learn to be a multitasker when you uh, come to college like nujs which provides you ample opportunities to both party and be study for uh, let's say for whatever purposes you want for any course for any uh, further qualifications all of that the library is pretty accessible you can um, no, on normal days you can study there till 10 pm and during our exam season we have 24 hour access where in students they might not be able to focus in their room so students flock to the library and uh, there are a group of people studying for the exam which is uh which is kind of motivating as well because there are so many people who are studying for the same thing which you have tomorrow which you are going to appear for tomorrow so the inherent thing of uh, competition lv or otherwise will always be there in the batch and which is a good thing because it pushes you to be better to be not to not be confident or to not settle for less in whatever position you are right now apart from that it's a great place to make friends hang out uh, the seniors special specifically are uh, very chill you can uh, after the first week i uh, i had gained the interest in volleyball at pool so i still do i still play pool sometimes and i am interested in volleyball as well i do play that sometimes so that is how you bond with seniors that is where i bet many seniors for third years fourth years fifth years second years and that is how you start bonding with seniors you know one senior that from their you know their group and that is how they recognize you you take part in activities so overall since the campus size is not that big which is a plus point so before coming to edges i had this concept of oh bigger ca- campus means a better campus and i couldn't have been any more wrong because nujs has been constructed so beautifully that even though it's a small campus considered to other uh nnus but it has been constructed in such a manner that if you take a walk around the entire campus you're definitely going to meet at least one of your batchmates and if not you'll definitely meet one senior that you actually know so which is uh, actually a good thing because you stick interconnected which is um again a very good thing because of the because of the likeliness and increase of bonding so overall it's a very friendly place it's a place to thrive in you you get to know seniors you you catch in with seniors you seniors are very uh, appreciative they are very helpful you if you have any doubt you can ping them late night they'll just ask you to come to their room and they'll brief you on whatever trouble you're facing so overall it's been a pretty uh, 
enjoyable, memorable ride for so far for the first semester. The second semester has just started. We are looking forward to making more memories and uh, excelling academically as well. So that's about it. Yeah, thanks so much, JP. Um, just to wrap up today's discussion, today's interview. Hey, let us know what are your plans in the future. Um, I understand it's just first semester. I myself haven't figured it out, so don't expect um, uh, you know, a kid is just coming to college to figure out what they want to do. But is there anything you're leaning towards particularly? Um, any particular area of law or area of work that you're interested in? And what do you think the future will achieve? Um, normally, I think that uh, so far, because I've not been exposed to the area of law that much, I look to I look forward to changing my mind or being exposed to more more areas of law so as to alter my decision or take a more informed, conscious decision in the future. But so far, it's corporate for sure that uh, I'll be going for corporate after my five years of law here at NUJS. That's the idea so far, but uh, recently... Uh, since this is a campus wherein you're exposed to so many things, including academically and otherwise, uh, in, during co-curriculars and all. So academically, I've been a bit intrigued towards criminal law. So let's see what that holds in store for me. Uh, I'm interested to work more on that aspect. I'll see what that holds for me in the future. That's uh, so far of what I've thought for future. Thank you so much, Daily. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and experiences with all of us. I'm sure. It is extremely valuable to get an insight into somebody who's gone through the process just like our viewers are going through right now. Um, thank you so much for coming today and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.